Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your host, RR Slugger, here with today's question. Can I make a video about sand purple better than Mayday figs? Mm, probably not. But when Mike sent me a Zamwasel minifigure to my PO box, thus completing my sand purple collection, I felt compelled to throw my hat into the ring as well. Thanks, Mike. This one's for you. Sand Purple was a LEGO color first introduced in 2001 and, quite notably, discontinued only two years later. I've talked about the great LEGO color purge of 2003 on this channel before, and today we're looking at one of its victims. But with that being said, Sand Purple is a rather high profile case. There's a good chance that you've heard of this color before, even though it was only ever included in a grand total of four retail sets. Other shades that shared a similar fate, such as light purple or medium violet, are not nearly as revered or well known. Why is that? Well, I think part of the reason is that Sand Purple had a core theme to identify with. The flagship set from Life on Mars 7317 Aerotube Hangar showcased the color prominently, and marketing material like this probably imprinted heavily upon its audience. It surely did with me. I know Life on Mars is often viewed as an afterthought in the annals of LEGO space history, but it's worth remembering that the LEGO group really threw their weight behind this theme. There was an inordinate amount of promotional material and general buzz created for the series, and while growing up, these sets were everywhere. 2001 is most commonly associated with another theme, but in the world of LEGO system, Life on Mars was one of the heavyweights of this era. If you were into LEGO back then, chances are you had at least one set from Life on Mars. However, that's all a tale for another time. I really do want to cover Life on Mars in detail on this channel someday, and while it's impossible to talk about Sand Purple without talking about Life on Mars, if we expand the scope too far, we'll be here for hours. So, getting into the specifics, what you're looking at right here is every single piece released in Sand Purple. This is a notoriously difficult color to build with, and it should speak volumes that the most quote-unquote normal part folks have to work with here is a 1x3 slope brick. Born of life on Mars, many of these parts have molds designed specifically for that theme, and therefore lend themselves well to sci-fi stylings. One of my favorite elements here, part 30535, was only ever included in three sets, and even less colors. I have a hard time believing LEGO Star Wars can never find a use for a piece like this, but reality proves me wrong. One piece that Star Wars did find a use for was part 30528. Another one of my personal favorites, this large, greebled door frame seemingly came out a little too late to find a welcomed home within LEGO space, which was sadly winding down. I really wish we would have seen this one in a few more colors, but at least LEGO Star Wars was kind enough to give us a nice, neutral black one for a send-off. As expected, several of these molds were made specifically to facilitate the Aerotube Hangar's central gimmick, the Air Pump Martian Sled System. Two of these pieces were made to attach to the tubes themselves, the longer of which actually being a product of a mid-production change to address issues in the connection. The largest sand purple element is the air pump itself. This is at the heart of the Aerotube hanger and features a rotating rubber element that allows the pump to go from suck to blow. She's gone from suck to blow. What? The element that I find most intriguing here though is actually part 30586. This plate has a two by eight footprint, although that's not entirely true. If you notice, there's a small lip along the length of it that extends slightly out of system. This lip will hug any piece placed on top of it, and the groove below it is the perfect fit for studs. You can even stack multiple 30586s on top of each other, and they'll align just right. The function of this piece is that it allows bricks to slide laterally along the rail, and this is used to great effect in the Aerotube hanger. By turning a crank, different hose destinations can be selected. Effective, but niche. 
you'd be forgiven for assuming this mold didn't last long after this. However, you would also be wrong. This piece has now been featured in almost 150 sets, and it all started with Life on Mars. Making its debut in Sand Purple, the history of Part 30586 is ostensibly a true rags to riches story. Within the Martians themselves, we actually see a fair bit of variety in skin tones and body colors. One Martian, Mizar, actually uses Sand Purple as their color of choice, and this color is reflected on their face printing as well. Quite a cool embodiment of this unique LEGO color. The only other series to feature sand purple bricks outside of Life on Mars was Zalix Racers. We've talked about that theme at lengths before, but only one racer is of interest today. Gear drives a car that contains two sand purple bricks on the front and back. While the character specific printing does make it difficult to reuse these pieces elsewhere, they do carry the honor of being the only printed sand purple parts beyond minifigure elements. And speaking of which, let's conclude by looking at the minifigure that inspired this video in the first place. Zamwissel is such an incredible minifigure. Sand purple is the perfect color for this character, and I think the LEGO group knows it, as they've never attempted another iteration. The immaculate leg, torso, and hip printing makes this already unique figure even more of a standout. Fans of this channel will certainly recognize the Rock Raiders helmet Zam is wearing, although this light gray example is character exclusive. I'm really excited to finally get one of these, and you'll probably see it pop up on other characters from time to time. Underneath it all, Zam has a reversible head, exposing her shape-shifting nature. This copy is a little rough around the edges, but that only goes to show how well-loved it was by its previous owner. I'll take good care of it, Mike. Thanks again. And thank you to all of you for watching. This video and others like it are made possible by the folks who donate during the Summer of Slug. This event simply doesn't happen without the generosity of the folks who watch these videos. Folks like you. I encourage you to consider donating on coffee or joining the Patreon campaign. To give you a little peek behind the curtain, this week in the Discord server we celebrated Rock Raiders Day, worked on our Metropolis mocks, and learned the intricacies of the Martian language. It's a great time. I hope you can join us in the future. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.